Hey guys, Colin Chi, Certified Nutritional Consultant, Numerologer, bringing you another talk today. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about astrology and the different parts of your zodiac chart, your astrology chart. Um, this is going to be kind of a short guide to some of my favorite points um, on your zodiac chart. Um, because it's not good to just know your sun sign only. That's what, when you say, oh, I'm a Virgo, or oh, I'm a Libra, or oh, I'm an Aries, that, you know, usually you're saying that's your sun sign, because in Western astrology, that's the main emphasis they put um, uh, in the chart is your sun sign. Whereas in uh, Vedic astrology, they put more emphasis on the moon sign. Um, in ancient astrology, in, in Greece, in Greek astrology, they put the most emphasis on the rising sign and a good amount of emphasis on the sign that was culminating at the time of your birth as well, which is really the midheaven. Um, so some of my favorite parts uh, you know, that you should know and look at, you need to know not only your sun sign, you know, uh, but you need to also know your moon sign, you need to know your midheaven, your uh, imam coeli, the midheaven is the medium coeli, uh, the Imam Coeli is the opposite point of the Medium Coeli um, or Midheaven. Um, you need to know your uh, rising sign or ascendant. Um, and you also need to know your south and north nodes um, and your chart ruler. I think these are some of the most important things to know. Um, you should, you know, you, you should still look more into it than just those, but if I had to pick some main points in your chart to focus on and look at out of all the different possible things to look at. You know, you, you should know your houses, you should know all these different things, but these are probably my favorite parts to look at, especially the midheaven is interesting to me. Um, so I'll give you a quick guide to some of these, uh, tell you what they are, how to read a chart essentially uh, in relation to these particular parts of your chart and uh, why they're important. So. Um, your sun sign, okay, that is where the sun was in your chart. That would, that's the constellation where the sun was at um, when you were born, at the time of your birth, okay? Um, then you have, and, and, and that's basically your basic, your most basic self, your most, um, your, you know, yourself, your ego, your inner self, your inner kind of qualities and characteristics that probably most represent you. But again, all of these are important. So there's not only one thing to focus on. You need, don't limit your idea about yourself. Don't limit your, your self concepts by just knowing only one part of a very complex lab labyrinth that is your astrology chart that puts limits on your potential and on your consciousness. So uh, know your rising sign, uh, otherwise known as your ascendant sign. That, again, they put a lot of emphasis on that. The Greek word horoscopos actually meant that, which was which is rising. So they put a lot of emphasis on the rising sign. And the rising sign is the sign that was on the eastern horizon at the time, at the exact time of your birth. That, that the, the constellation that was rising, that was on the eastern horizon rising at the time of your birth. So they say that that constellation was being born as you were being born, you know? So that is considered your kind of like your face to the world, your persona, um, how people see you outwardly, how you act outwardly. Um, but I do think it's a very important part because that's a big part of your personality and yourself is, is, is your persona, how you're coming off. Um, outwardly that is a big part of you too so uh, and it's not just that either because that knowing your rising sign also uh, lets you into knowing your chart ruler um, this is the planet that or planet or planets that really rule your entire chart and kind of give the tone to your chart um, so they're very very important so that's why the rising sign is so important because knowing your rising sign if you know which planets rule which signs, you know, then it's very easy to know your chart ruler. But your chart ruler essentially is the planet that rules your rising signs. So if you're a Pisces rising, Neptune and Jupiter are considered co-rulers co 
of Pisces. Um, so those would be the two that are mainly influencing kind of the tone of your entire chart. Um, so they're pretty important, but all of these are equally important, I think. You know, never focus only on just one thing. Um, so also you need to really know your moon sign as well. Vedic astrology puts more emphasis on the moon sign than Western astrology. Uh, and the moon sign is essentially your your kind of like your unconscious um, self and your emotions. Um, kind of what comes, um, kind of where you're where you're coming from emotionally, and it's almost you know overdeveloped sometimes uh, to where it's uh, kind of a natural kind of thing that you don't realize it's it's so structured into you that. Uh, that those are your unconscious kind of thoughts and emotions are arising from that area. So that's your moon sign. Uh, some people look at the moon sign or the or Venus when they're talking about relationships. They often compare those things to see whether they're placed in a good house or in a good, you know, if you look at synastry, if you look at the other person's chart, you know, you can compare Okay, you know, maybe if you have the same moon sign as the other person in, you know, your, your moon is in the same sign or in the same house as, a, as your partner, then that might be a really good thing. Or if Venus is in a similar place or, you know, it's not all about similarities either. Opposites attract too, but, you know, there's different ways to look at it. So um, I had a psychic tell me one time, though, that opposites attract, but likes stay together. So, but you have to have a mixture of both, I think. You know, you can't be completely the same or completely opposite. You got to have a little mixture. Um, so your moon sign. You also need to really know your midheaven. I think this one's very important to me, and I like this one because, because I'm somewhat of an ambitious person, and this is kind of about your career, and, the, and, the, and, and I'm a kind of directed, driven kind of person that I want a direction and a purpose-driven kind of life. So... This, the midheaven is, before I get into exactly what the midheaven is, uh, you know, characteristic wise, uh, what it tells you, uh, it is the, you can think about it like the high noon of your astrology chart, even though it's the most, most southern part of your chart, it's kind of backwards, it's weird, but think about it like the high noon um, of your chart, like, so if you were a Pisces rising, um, that constellation was rising at the time on the eastern horizon of your birth. Um, so you can think about, okay, so it's over here, okay, this is the horizon, it's over here rising, then think about think about it like the sun, you know, the sun would be, it's, it's, it's rising over here, and then when it gets to high noon, you know, the, the, the southernmost point, that's your midheaven, that's your 10th house cusp, uh, if you're a Pisces rising, it's automatically going to be Sagittarius midheaven, um, which is these these are the things that I am. So, um, so that gives you the midheaven. Like I said, it's career, it's your professional um, responsibilities, it's it's where it's your future, where you're going towards. You know where you're. You can really get some direction out of your chart. You like you look at your chart and like. Well, which do I focus on? You know, if there's one point for for a more ambitious type of person to focus on, it's probably that career and that that midheaven where it is your responsibilities, it's your pu kind of public status, it's your um, social status. It's it's really you know, it's kind of like your destiny. Some people describe it as your, some people describe that midheaven and then the, which is the medium coeli and then the imum coeli, which is the very bottom of your chart, the bottom most part of your chart. That's called the imum coeli. Um, that's the northernmost part, the darkest part of your chart and the most unconscious. Um, they're kind of one line, you know, they're both in the conversation. Um, because they're the same kind of the axis of the soul, some people say. Um, because you're coming from the Imam, Imam Coeli, you're kind of coming from there. That's kind of your roots, your parents, your, that's the fourth house, okay? Your, um, 
your parents, your um, where you're coming from, uh, your approach to attaining security, um, and kind of your roots, um, your and your parents also. So, like I said, um, but it's the most unconscious place. So that is feeding that ambition upward towards that high noon, your highest, the, the, the medium coeli, the mid heaven, is considered your highest aspirations in life, your goals, your ideals, your dreams kind of, you know, those kind of things. So even though dreams is really the ninth house, but you know, goals, aspirations, career, where you should head towards, you know, what's what your, uh, essentially what your, what your place in the sun is gonna be, you know, when, when you really shine. Um, so really look at that that I like a lot um, the so that's the mid heaven the Imam Coeli is considered the base of heaven it's the northernmost point mid heaven southernmost point but you think about the mid heaven as like the high noon the highest point in your chart when you look at your actual astrology chart um, so then you should also know your south node and your north node I think those are important points to know um, and those are nodes of the moon. Those are calculated based on where the moon is and, and, uh, I forget where everything else is, but basically the North node is your karma. What's, what tends to be, um, underdeveloped in you. So, and this rings, I think, pretty true with numerology because in numerology, um, this stuff actually works out to be correct because for me, my north node is Aries and one of my karmic numbers in numerology is number one, which is basically Aries, uh, essentially uh, kind of personality. Um, so that makes sense. But the interesting part here is where, where um, numerology doesn't really separate and differentiate between, like you may have three karma numbers, um, but it doesn't tell you which are underdeveloped or overdeveloped. See, this is where astrology gets more complex and a little more detailed than numerology can sometimes. Um, but it depends probably on the numerology system you're using. They're both awesome. Um, and numerology is a little more approachable, I find, and a little easier to remember and focus on and can elucidate things that astrology sometimes doesn't. Um, I could be wrong about that, but that's my intuition. But um, so anyway, the North Node, uh, where you know it's because in in your karmic numbers in numerology they say you know these numbers could be your could be underdeveloped or overdeveloped. It could be either way. But whereas in astrology they actually differentiate. So the the North Node is what's underdeveloped. You know what you might need to work on. Um, your what you're most unfamiliar with. What you need to push harder to try and practice more of if you want to grow more you know not everybody has the goal of growth and self-actualization but um some people do so um and then the south node is what is overdeveloped what is so overdeveloped and so natural to you your habits and your natural kind of ways um that you don't think about it so it's also a, a somewhat unconscious part uh, of the zodiac, so of your chart, it's also considered the past lives uh, south node, and also the um, the midheaven is considered, you know, the future, you know, where you're headed towards. Whereas, like I said, the imam coeli uh, is considered more your past lives. So, um, you know, like I said, your roots, your imam coeli, your roots, your family, your home. Um, your security, your approach to security, things like that. So, um, interesting stuff. Um, I really like, these are the main points I like to look at and think about when I'm looking at a chart, but there's so much more to it. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, hope, hopefully that gives you a little bit of a guide how to look at your chart and ways to differentiate parts of yourself and your personality um, and just how to look at all that. So 
Um, so yeah, no more than your sun sign, folks, because you don't want to limit yourself. You don't want to limit your potential and your possibilities. Life is about trying to have as much possibilities open to you as possible so that you can, uh, you know, I mean, life is about different things for different people. That's the whole point of knowing astrology. But for some people, you want to know this stuff maybe in times of trouble or maybe in times of, you know, confusion or or just or just if you want to be a more intentional, um, progressive and, and growth oriented, growth mindset kind of person. And if you want to really direct your life based on your most sacred and foundational kind of selves and principles and ideals. So um, Colin Chi, certified nutritional consultant, numerologer. I hope you enjoyed it. I also study astrology quite a bit. I study palmistry. I study all these, you know, mysterious things. And uh, I've really found that astrology and numerology, I'm not one of these wacky woo people. I'm a very grounded scientific person. And I've really, really found some serious validity, unbelievably accurate validity down to the T, down to exact wording, down to exact words, like crazy accuracy, especially the further and further you go into astrology. So hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want a consultation, hit me up. Uh, I'll put a link below, colinchi at gmail.com. If you'd like a consultation on numerology, uh, or if you'd like a consultation on nutrition, hit me up and, uh, like subscribe, you know, enjoy all the different videos we're doing on this channel. We do nutrition, we do, uh, science, we do, uh, motivation, we do, um, workout videos. So check them out. Uh, and as always, rise.